hey guys, brand new podcast. And I just want to say, uh, I am co-hosting the new Tiger Belly. It's out right now. It's it's uh, Bobby uh, is in rehab again. And uh, they just kidding. He's not in rehab. He was, I don't even know if I can tell you where he is, but he, was, he wasn't there. And he asked me to co-host and I did. And I had a fucking blast. Check it out. Um, and uh, yeah, new podcast right now. We got some great sponsors today. Thank you to all my sponsors. Thank you to you guys for listening to the podcast. New Two Bears One Cave is out. Uh, new Bill Bird is out. And we go hard in the paint. Go Big Show every Thursday night. 9 p.m. 8 central and that's it let's start the podcast today's episode is is awesome i met jared jared Fried is my guest i met jared a long time ago my cousin andrew um i think went to college with him and my cousin andrew's like yo i got a friend who's in comedy he's got a podcast this is back when we were all just starting podcasting and so i got to know jared there we worked together uh in um atlantic city one weekend i think it was atlantic city might have been at, like the borgata or something or uh, not the Borgata, Mohegan Sun. Anyway, uh, I caught him one morning. We had partied all night, and I caught him the next afternoon having a cold beer, and I fell in love with him then. I fell in love with him then. We do a great podcast. He has a new special called Socially Distanced, dot, 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 of course. It's on YouTube right now. Check it out. He just shot it, I think, New Year's Eve, and so uh, it's all... It's awesome. I just watched it and he's a great guy and it's a great podcast and I'm not going to sit here and bore you with a long intro. I'm just going to let you get to the podcast. So without further ado, my buddy, stand-up comedian with a new special out on YouTube. Go check it out called Socially Distance, of course, Jared Fried. He's the man. Congrats on the special. Let's do it. Dude, thank you so much. It's and, and thank you for having me. This is it's good to see you. I, I'm no, you're the best. There's certain people that to talk to. You. There's certain people that are easy to podcast with. Where you go, oh, you know what's interesting is I was thinking about this today. You you yeah. said something in your special. I forget if you said it. I don't know if you said it. it like I, I don't know how you said it, but I. But I I, I read it as um. It was, it was literally it's like the first words out of your mouth about let's talk shit or, or let's get going or I forget what it was, but it was it it read as an exuberance to tell the truth. And yeah, it's so funny. And you're and you're spe and your special is fantastic. And Dude, you I you are someone who who I feel like is married to being honest, you know? Yeah, I, 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 I first of all, thank you for watching. Like, I, I. That's of course. The, such a compliment come through. Like means so much. I, um, yeah, I think like I can tell when people are bullshitting and like comic co to me, comedy is that's bullshit. And, and I can feel the lie. I can feel the, and also I always believe in Bert, you and I are a lot of like where it's like, if I, I, I kind of, I'm like, I'm this way. You're not a hundred percent different from me. You might be 10% different from me. <laughs> But you're not a hundred percent. I'm I'm not I'm I'm not I'm I'm closer to you than you think. <laughs> exactly, and that's kind of like the sad reality of the internet is like, like it's like oh everyone knows the Richard Gear hamster story that yeah. wasn't just me and my friends. It's kind of depressing to hear like everyone's on the same page, but you see with like memes and stuff. So it's like I I wanted to tape kind of the feeling I had where it's like over the summer. I'm doing all this COVID material on like street corners in New York and on top of dumpsters, like a crazy person. And I got to like 20 minutes and I was like, let's get to 30. Let's put some interviews behind it and let's tape it on New Year's Eve. And I was like, yeah. I want to just be able to. And I think like I'm a moderate person and saying you're a moderate right now is like offensive to people. Like yeah. I, you know, I look at things and I'm not even a political comic. Like, before we start, we're talking about trying to lose weight. I want to talk about trying to lose weight. I'm the same way. Yeah. I, I, I want to talk about trying to lose weight. I want to talk about girls and dating and my girlfriend. Like, But then I'm in this position where it's like the whole world, everyone is like the social anxieties of 2020 were such are su still such a thing where it's like people go to their moral high ground with every subject and you can't disagree with them. When it becomes my grandmother's dying, if you leave the house, then they win every time. And it's like, how do we talk about it in a nuanced way? That's also funny. That, and yeah. it's like everything's so serious. So that was like the goal. And just like, I'm happy you took away from it. Like, yeah, I'm just trying to like be honest with you. Like, I'm not, a, I'm an okay person. 
just like we're all just okay person trying to eat, sleep and fuck. That's what we're all trying to do. Yeah. And we're trying to make enough money to be able to put food on our table for our kids. And it's like, I'm going to wear the mask. I'm going to be respectful. But I'm also, when someone yells at me, like, stay the fuck home when they, before this, worked from home anyways. That's like, go talk to your dad that you disagree with politically. Don't yell at me online. And I think everyone's anxiety is just upped a little bit, you know? And that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Well, it's, dude, you you did a, I, I honestly, a, a great special makes you think. And I kind of was out of my head going like, fuck. Like, I actually was thinking, I, I, it's so funny. I'm on the treadmill. I'm watching your special. I have like a, I don't know if you can see it, but I have like an arm. Hang on, right there. There's an arm that holds my cell phone. So I'm okay. watching, like, so I'm watching it, and I get a text that, "Oh, hey, you're on Stone Cold Steve Austin," and I go, out to, I watch it, and it's so, man. As I'm hearing you tell the truth, I then cut to me on this Stone Cold thing, and he and I said, you know, I have a new joke about my dad cheating on my mom that I don't think he's gonna like, and then I cringed at my own telling the honesty. I cringed it by was mm. like, Bert, why the fuck do you have to be so honest? Like, don't do that. Like, and then I was like, my dad's going to fucking be pissed if he sees that. I, I didn't even know I was saying it. You know, I don't like that's what's fucked up about me is I, I go, I, I don't even you get so ingrained when you're younger in this business to yeah. be careless. Not and, and I let me say careless isn't the right word to be reckless, to mm. be to be out of pocket to talk some trash, to be as real as you can, that as you grow older and become an adult, at times you're like, the fuck did I sign up for? Like, <laughs> I'm being honest about shit. Sometimes people don't want to hear it. Like, I did a podcast with Segura yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and I was, and, and like, I'm being honest. I, I don't, I don't, I wasn't being dishonest, but I hope that it doesn't, that a, a part of it doesn't come off insensitive. Or, or sure. that people misread it as, you know, Bobby Schmurter got out of uh, jail. Mm -hmm. And to put perspective into what I said, they have him on fucking parole or on like, was it, is it parole? Like, I don't, what, whatever it is. Yeah. He's, like, he's on parole for like fucking five years or something, three years. Okay. It's undoable. Now, I know that through me talking shit on this podcast about Meek Mill, that mm -hmm. the biggest problem they have in the justice system for young black males is they put them on parole forever so they become repeat offenders and they send them back to prison. You and I put just, them in a no win situation. There's yeah. no way. No one can yeah, yeah, fucking. Yeah, yeah. No one can be perfect for fucking. Especially if your no. name's Bobby Schmurder. You know, like yeah. <laughs> you gotta change it to you know Bobby. Uh, you know, hangs out at you know McDonald's and you know drinks a Coca Cola. Like he's gotta like change Bobby, his name. Or Bobby something. Crosswalk. And so. Yeah. <laughs> And so, and so I just said, I said, he's going back to jail. <laughs> like I showed, mm. I just, I see gets on this private jet and they've got Schmurda kits, like stuff in there for, to have fun. And he's got these <laughs> girls in there and his buddy, like Quavo's in there. And I was like, and I just said very, very callously, like he's going back to jail. I didn't mean it like, because sure. dot, dot, dot. I just went, that's the way the system's set up. There's well, no way he well, can also you, When you make a joke, it's because you know whenever we talk about stuff, it's about every, we're all narcissists. Uh -huh. You're saying that because you're basically saying if I was in that position, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to handle it. I go back to jail. That's put what me, you're saying. Put me on parole for one month. That <laughs> should be, that's my next show. I want to go on parole for one month. That's and see if you could do it and see if and I can say that's a good parole. idea. And, and just like live Bobby Schmurda's reality. And it's like, let's see how hard this is. And it's like, oh my God, I can't wait a minute. I have to call someone every, you know, Friday at this. I don't even know what you do on parole. Like, you I know, don't you know who would produce that? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart, I think, is friends with Meek Mill. And Kevin Hart's the reason I knew about the Meek Mill shit. Cause I, I we did a we did a podcast and I was like, I was like, I was just talking shit about Meek Mill. This is before I knew what was going on. And mm. someone reached out and they're like, yo, man, you're missing the point. And I was like, they're like, he's he's a repeat offender because the system's set up to fail him like they're not like they're trying to get him he got sent back to jail for getting into an argument with a security guard at, a, at an airport the, yeah and it's like who hasn't looked at someone and been like do i need to like you all at an airport you're an inch away from an argument no matter what you're on a tight wire where you go oh do i go this way it takes one person with a bad day to go this way sir and you go 
um, do this way. And then like, you know, and then you're, if you're him, you're down the road, you know, like I'm, dude, I'm watching, I'm watching Kodak black, by the way, I'm obsessed with, uh, hip hop. I have no idea why I'm a 48 year old man. And I, I can't <laughs> listen to it with my windows down anymore. Cause that's a hate crime. I, I got done. videotaped, dude. I got videotaped by a guy. I'm listening to Trinidad James and, uh, and it's uh, all gold, everything. And the N word, it runs a plenty in that song. Right. Really? <laughs> yeah. And what's interesting is I'm not singing with it. I, my windows are down. I'm not singing the N word, but my wing, wing, windows are down. <laughs> well, do you see what they do on TikTok? Well, they'll do the hand over when they're doing a dance and a bad word comes up like the N word. They'll go like the white girls will take their finger, go shh over the mouth. And it's like a dance move. And it's like now that's kind of like. Like, does that become the slur at a certain point where it's like, uh, you know, like, you know, like what, when does no, what's, language what's, go that way? What's the girl? What's the girl who gets got on stage at like a at like a, a T.I. concert or whatever? And he was like, sing along with me. Or, I forget what it was. And she and he gives her the mic and she just starts busting the N word out in oh front of 100,000 people it's like we're both real. And I, <laughs> by the way. I would pay money to, first of all, the unawareness of going like, may, maybe don't sing it in front of him. No. I, well, him putting the mic in your face, you, I could understand where her argument is like, well, I thought I was approved. You know, like he, it, I thought it was the guy. Yeah. I, it's the guy who wrote the song. I, I was doing, <laughs> you know, you know, like that's the I'm not going to change his lyrics in front of him. Yeah, like I can do I? better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, she, yeah. Like what are Wait, that's the only argument I could see, but it, it is a moment where you're in the crowd and you're just like, that's like watching like a, you know, the da like a daredevil, you know, you're like, oh, here it comes. Uh, 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 oh, wow. you know, like God. she wiped out. She missed the landing. She missed the landing hard, you know, but it's, it that's fucking hilarious. Yeah. It. So anyway, I, I got videotaped some mm. young, it was, it was a young black kid and a white chick, but he wasn't mm. like, he was just like he looked like an art school you know kid like he didn't look like he wasn't like a like he just looked like a young kid who's having coffee outside a place sure and he hears that and and the fact that i was listening to it i guess he just found that odd and i'm bobbing my head along and he just started yeah. recording me and i was like oh there we go i'm getting canceled yeah that's my you're... new theory that's my new theory you better have your camera out first i'm gonna <laughs> yeah. wear a body cam i'm gonna wear a cop body cam on at all times you're at that meme age where it's yeah. like someone's he's videotaping you for his joke. Like, it's not even like cancellation. It's more like, you know, like he's putting the meme underneath, like, you know, white guys are bopping their heads now. Like, like he's got like a line. Like, it's like when you, you know, you see something funny in the airport and you start videotaping. You're like, hmm, should I be making this joke? Because this person is just becoming my like. You know, like my fodder, you know, like I have that all the time where like there was a I'm in the car the other day. My girlfriend's next to me and I took a video of like an older woman in in like a wheel. She was in one of those like scooters and she I wanted to be like rolling into Monday and I was going to take a video of her rolling by. But then she got stuck and she wasn't driving anymore. So now I'm just taping a stuck old woman in a scooter and like. Now I'm just like zo zooming in on her face. And my girlfriend looked at me. She's like, you can't do that to her. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. And yeah. it's like, I, I think that's like the big thing with all this is like the ability to go. Yeah, I'm wrong there. Let me roll it back with things like oh. that. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely I wish people could. Uh, I wish people had that self-awareness of like of like, oh, I, I fucked up like I, I called. I, I called Chelsea Handler a cunt on one, one of my specials. Mm -hmm. I don't even know Chelsea Handler. I, li I actually sure. really, I like her a lot. But sure. I just, I mean, word on the street is the woman is tough to work with. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're just repeating what you've heard. Yeah. yeah, I don't even, I have no, I have no real experience. Mm -hmm. I just said, I just needed a punchline. I needed a name and, and I like Ellen DeGeneres. I heard you. By the way, at the time, if I had said it, everyone would have been like, what the fuck's wrong with you and Ellen DeGeneres? Yeah. I had heard the Ooh. same about Ellen DeGeneres, but I wasn't <laughs> going to put my neck on the line over Ellen DeGeneres. <laughs> you weren't looking to be the Hannibal Burris for Cosby, you know, for Ellen DeGeneres. Like you were like, yeah, I'm going to let someone else be the person that outs. Yeah, Ellen I'm not, not going to use <laughs> Oprah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jen Kirkman's too inside baseball. I mean, I need to find a real <laughs> I mean, joking. If Jen Kirkman hears this, I'm joking, Jen. <laughs> I need to find a culturally agreed upon C word yeah. to really <laughs> amp this joke up. And and then today I saw her. She was. Did you see her video she posted? No. Oh, it's fucking awesome. This is why I love Chelsea Handler, and I don't. This is why I love her. And then I go, why would I ever fucking do that? Because it's like mm-hmm. you're a young comic, and you don't think anyone's going to see your special. Like when you shoot your special, you hope everyone sees it, but you know there's a chance that you'll get like. If, if, what's your expectation of like of like how many would you be like happy that v- viewed your special? First, if week. I got. Oh, first, I don't even know. Like, this is the thing. I've never really done a lot of YouTube stuff. So, like, I don't have. Really? This. Yeah, I put my podcast up there, but, like, I don't have that YouTube, like, bump that a, some people have. I'm, I'm actually nervous about it. Because, like, the people that I kind of, like, uh, the audience that I've kind of found is, uh, like, 86% women. And yeah, it's that's like, interesting to me because that's so not you. I mean, you're. No. I, no but, no, but, like. <laughs> Well, you're into the bachelor at your bachelor, right? All bachelor stuff. But that's kind of how I basically have become, especially on the podcast, I give dating advice. And the people that are in, interested in dating advice are women in their 20s to 30, early 30s, 20s to 40s. So like, that's the group that comes. And it's always just like you said, at my shows, it'll be a woman with her boyfriend and the boyfriend's like, uh, like so annoyed to be there. He's like, who's this? bad guy i'm a straight dude who yells at the bachelor and gives their girlfriend dating advice to them i'm just a guy trying to get with their girlfriend yeah. and, and and i'm like and i slide get in that, a j train <laughs> right and it's like and, and i go and and four minutes into the show you can see them like unclench their arms because they're like oh he's a guy i would hang out with like if anything like it, it, like their girlfriend's my way into the boyfriend so like i again for youtube youtube's like kind of a guy world to me like i don't think there's yeah. a lot of like female stand-up fans on youtube if you just look at the demographics so i i'm hoping for like you know in my wildest dreams i just see what other people have and i'm like i want that and that's the dumbest way to go that's you know, like if i got fifty thousand views i'd be happy yeah yeah oh yeah that would be great i mean that i look at i look at I I stopped. I used to look at YouTube views. I stopped looking because I was like, I was like, I I don't know. Like it's interesting, you know. Once Rogan got off YouTube, I, I was mm. like, I, I didn't find myself on YouTube all that much. Interesting. Like I and, like and- I I follow, I follow this kid Nathan uh, Florence, who's a surfer, pro surfer. Mm. I follow him on YouTube. I I was obsessed with Casey Neistat. Like that guy. That guy was fucking the greatest. See, I don't even know this YouTube world. Like I know like, and again, that's how segmented this stuff is like Instagram. So I'm like, oh, like a, a woman in her 20s, Jewish girl from Long Island in her 20s is like, yeah, Jared yells at The Bachelor. And it's like, of course. And yeah. it's like, you know, and, and it's because she's on Instagram as much as I am. And it's like, it's so weird how this stuff gets kind of cut up. And, you know, it, it's, uh, I, I don't know, they, they, it's just, you're trying to find just people, but since, you know, it's, yeah. you're just looking for people who get where you're coming from and want to like have fun. Like that, that's the other thing. Like, I, that's why I love you. It's like, you just want to have fun. I want people to enjoy. I want people to like make a date night, do that type of thing. Like as, as stupid as that sounds you know? right now, right now I am that right now, my whole thing is just about having fun. I'm in, I'm, I'm living the uh, Joe Rogan fantasy camp right now. Is that so what's, what's the Joe Rogan fantasy camp? It's it's uh workout, uh podcast and party. That is Love all it. Joe. J- but if, How- if no stand up right now because there's nothing's open. But but like I work out. I get I. It's I, I'm telling you we we just got a new podcast studio. Yeah. And uh and I have a gym attached to the podcast studio, and uh and and, and in all honesty That's it was great. gonna be a That's man great. cave. It was gonna be a man cave, and then my wife was like uh, I was like I think you should. I think you should get a gym. Actually, we were we were having dinner with friends and my buddy uh does like is a movie producer and he was explaining, you know, when say like uh I was going to say Johnny Depp, that's not the I, mean, I don't want to say the real actors names that he works with. Okay. But yeah. like but he did work with Johnny Depp. So, but imagine if Johnny Depp was in shape, right? Mm. He's like, you know, when Johnny Depp or like when big movie stars go to do a movie, uh, I have to set up gyms for them. And so, because I was saying, I, you can't get gym equipment. And he was like, yeah, I can get you gym equipment. And I was like, mm-hmm. for real? 
He goes, yeah, I have an access. I have access. I get, cause you know, we go out and we'll buy like, you know, $40,000 worth of gym equipment for a movie and set it up. And then I'll have another movie. I got to bring, you know, we have four locations. So, so, so he he's was like, like a good client. Yeah. He's a great client. Yeah. So these, these big, 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 uh, by the way, they're, and they're all these people are all really good friends with Rogan, like mm -hmm. really good friends with Rogan. And so he was like, let me set it up for you. And I was like, really? And he was like, yeah, let me, I'll, I'll get you a gym. And Liam was like, you should definitely get a gym in there instead of just more places to drink. Like, cause I, she's like, <laughs> you, you can, can find places to drink. I, I can, I can count on you for that. Yeah. You know, like I can count on you to turn a tree into the Keebler elf you know, hang out and you'll be in there with a big mug of beer. Like yeah. she can count on you for that. <laughs> exactly. And so, <laughs> so I go over to do, we're doing these outdoor socially distant COVID tested podcasts. So oh, that sounds like a fucking hey. mouthful. And, uh, <laughs> but it's fun. I go over there and, 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 you know, I used to look at Joe, you'd come over to do a podcast with Joe and he just, you know, doing a set of squats or, or fucking benching 225 20 times. And, and he'd be like, yeah, you ready to podcast? And you're like, I would be like, that would be a cool life that, you could have this place to hang out. And then, you know, Joe, totally. and, and I, it was funny because Joe's not a big drinker. Like he'll have a cocktail with you, but he'll yeah. have like enough to feel the buzz. And then he calls it a night. And I was always like, I was always That's like, a person does... who can stay in shape too. Like I'm, yeah. I'm the worst. I'm like, I got that buzz. And I'm like, I guess we got to finish the bottle now. Like, I guess we have to, I mean, you and I have been there. You get, we get into Tito's. It's like, yeah, I guess we're drinking Tito's for the rest of the weekend. You know, yeah, like, I, yeah. and, and, and then it's like, oh, and I didn't eat that much today. I guess we're eating tonight. Like I'm like, and dude, I have been on such a good fitness thing recently. And I, I want to know what, what equipment are you getting? Uh, everything. I have everything. everything. I have a, a full squat rack, like a full rack. Um, I've got free weights up to 50. Um, I've got uh, a rowing machine. I've got a treadmill. I've got a, a bike. I've got, um, you got kettlebells. I have, no, no, no. I have a, I do. I have a straight, I've been, I've done so much spin class in my life that okay. I can do, I can do a spin workout myself. I love spin wow. class for the record. I have a great I, bike, great spin bike, great spin shoes. Um, I have maces. I have the, uh, I have kettlebells. I have everything in there and it's fucking awesome because you just go in and, and, and by the way, where everyone's drinking in the other room where the podcast studio mm -hmm. is, is where everyone hangs out. So everyone's yeah. drinking over there. And then I just, everyone leaves and I go into the gym and I bang out some chest and then fucking <laughs> wait till my buzz goes, gets done and call my wife. Hey, pick me up. It was fucking, it's, how, I'm, it's, it's, it's Joe Rosen fantasy camp. How far away is it? So, two miles from my house. So I can walk. It's, that's amazing. Uh, I mean, there it is. Like yeah. that. I've been working with a trainer like this guy. Me too. Me too. Are you really? It's my favorite yeah. thing in the world. It's the best. I never think about. Well, I'm in Boca with my parents. I'm living in my parents' pool house in Boca. That's so, perfect. which is the most Jewish thing I've ever said in my entire life. And I'm <laughs> literally, they live in this community in Boca and there's a field. So every morning, 930, we get on FaceTime and no weights, just two bands and the grass. And yeah. I am so happy to be away from like, chest and buys and tries and buys and whatever the fuck it is i am and i get on face with him one hour and then i'm done and i've also started with a nutritionist dude uh, i am me like too really so what, what i do told people i don't know i you know i am it's the worst thing to tell people i you know i, <laughs> I, I, I it's funny i i don't want i've been very uh, very honest about who I am on social media, but I don't yeah. want people to be grossed out by me. And I, and there would be times where I'd see people who were, who would like set up a camera and, 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 the, or they would videotape themselves doing a workout that mm. wasn't like a personal best. It was just them doing squats or sure. just them doing like crunches. And I just was always like, what the fuck? Like, unless you're an, a, an MMA athlete or Brennan Schaub would do it and I'd be cool with it. Like Brennan Schaub, yeah. if he was, training i'm fine with it but like just the average comedian like regular comedian i take that back like if i saw ron funches doing squats i'm into it you know like i'm like oh cool ron's getting in shape <laughs> sure. but i just was like i just didn't want anyone to rub anyone wrong that i'm trying to like lose weight or that i could have by the way even that i could afford a trainer and what is sure. for this country a, a horrific time to financially and uh and i got blessed by this company trifecta 
trifecta who they sponsor like legit athletes and yeah. the guy's a fan he hit me up he was like my sisters had gotten the meals it's like a meal plan thing so mm -hmm. they send you on friday you get like 15 meals or something and they and that you can eat for the whole week and they're That's great right now none of them are none of them are ever over 500 calories but the ones i got this week are all about 380 calories mm -hmm. and they're fucking awesome they're really great so i've been eating those I was telling Segura, my problem is I'll, every now and then I'll sneak a Butterfingers, and a fucking Butterfingers is like 500 calories. It's crazy when it's you like, start that doesn't even make sense. Why would it? it makes, why, that should be illegal. It should be illegal, and and it should be illegal for the calories to be on the back. Like it, you should turn it over, and it should say, "What the fuck did you think would be here?" Like, 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 what yeah. did you think was going to happen? Like, I don't want to see like, like, oh, it's going to be two calories. Like, I, 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 dude, I'm so with you. All of this stuff is so hard. The nutritionist, I'm like, I told her, I was like, I'm like, I'm done. Like, I told her my biggest problem is open-ended meals. And I was like, I need a beginning, a middle, and an end What do you to mean? My Expl meal. Explain so, that. So, like, I can't be at a table with, like, six appetizers out and then a bunch of entrees we're all going to share. I'm going to have them all. Like, there's no, yeah. and it, I can't have, like, me getting to a point where I'm, like, starving. Because what happens is I will get to a point where I'm so hungry and it becomes this thing of like, I not, my mind is like, I have to have the best thing and the most healthy thing for right, right now. And it, if I get to the point, what I always do is I get just the best thing and then health goes out the window and I rationalize it later. I'm like, well, I, you know, it did have chicken in it, you know, like it's like a fried, you know, chicken sandwich. I'm like, well, I did get my protein. Like I'll do that. But it's like, so I told this person, I was like, I need to never be hungry. I need to eat volume and I need a beginning, middle and end. Meaning like, so I, like when I said to her, I was like, when I fly breakfast, what can I have? Say it. Don't give me yeah. the rules. I don't want to, I don't want to sit in the Delta sky room going, well, seven hard boiled eggs and, and then just keep going. She's like, you can have two and a half hard boiled eggs and a banana. That is the beginning, middle and end. And I'm like, okay. Now there's no question. There's no, cause the, the math that I'm going to do is it was eggs and I put Tabasco on it. And then I have seven of them. I chop them up and I put mayonnaise and I'm all of a sudden I'm having an egg salad sandwich. You well, know, like, way, that sounds so good. And the delicious. fact that I never once thought to make an egg salad sandwich in the Delta crown room is making me angry that I'm not flying <laughs> right now. I, I, you know, I'm really upset. My mouth's watering. My mouth's watering. Yeah, this know, is what's, my, this is where I'm unhealthy is I just, I, how many times did I eat? fucking hard-boiled eggs in the Delta crown room and never wants to go, do you guys have any mayonnaise and a pickle so I can make That's some it. egg salad and really enjoy this meal? And toast the bagel because they got bagels, the shitty bagels they have. Listen, dude, I can dance around a Delta Skyrim. I am I am like a big Delta fan. Were you a Delta guy? No, I'm an American Airlines guy. I so, fly okay. Delta also. I had a problem with Delta one time and I vowed never to fly them. And I stopped. Uh, I mean, I like, I'm like a... I flew enough where I was like a gold member or whatever sure. diamond, but, but I, I, I was, I, they, one time they, no joke, no joke. Uh, I bought a first class ticket, but it was, a. a you know, I'm sure you, if you fly a lot, you know, the difference. Yeah. It was a, 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 a J first class ticket. So it was like a discounted first class ticket, okay. like a, in the fair, in the fair things. Sure. And so. I get there and they moved me to coach and I went, no. no. And, I, and they were like, yeah, you, your, your, your ticket, we had to change planes. Your ticket doesn't, it won't keep. Oh, you so they first. went from like a 10 seater first to like a six seater first. Yeah. And, and then and you're I, out. That's a I, very specific situation. And I called the lady on the phone powerless and she did not care, nor did she care. She just was like, this is how it works. And she was like, what's the worst you're going to do? Not fly Delta. And I said, yeah. Oh and I'm going to have a podcast with millions of listeners where I'm going to tell this story until the day I die. Like she literally, this is, yeah, this is before the internet. This is yeah. when, and this is where you start looking at people <clears throat> recording, you know, cops beating mm -hmm. up young black kids where you go. Yeah. No one's powerless anymore. Like you can mm -hmm. totally reclaim your power. Back then I wasn't, uh, I, I, I was totally powerless. And I was like, I'll just never fly Delta again. And she goes, we won't miss you. And I was like, she said cool. that. Yeah. She goes, we won't miss you, honey. We have. And I was upset. I was also, by the way, just for, to be fair about this story. I was drunk. 
I had landed <laughs> already. I, I already landed. I was yeah. back at my house. This is this is probably 12 years ago. No, probably 14 years ago. And I was drunk and I was angry and I called to get my money back and she wouldn't refund me my money. She wouldn't do anything. And hey. I, and I, I and I'm sure I was I was probably less than uh, polite on the phone. I was upset. Sure. But she just was like, we're not going to miss you. And I was wow. like, wow, I, I can't believe because I have like I sit here singing the praises of Delta. That's like that. That's a different experience. It's, than it's I've not. Ever it's, had. It, by the way, it's, it's not the it, airline. It, only take, it takes yeah. one person. It ta- it's not, it, and it's it not takes. the airline. Like I listen, I watch people get upset with American and I go, I've never had a bad experience with American. Yeah, I should yeah, take yeah. that back. I did one time, but the lady, they fixed it. But uh, but. Uh, and, and it's just the one person. It's not representative of the of the. You want to hear a good a good one? So sure. I I said um, I went when I was on the X show. I'm I'm trying to remember the there was a there was a a carrier out of New York in the 90s that was fucking people left and right. There was a big lawsuit. A big Continental. Is that what it was? No, 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 no. It was a it was a, a telephone company. Oh, okay. A telephone company that was out of New York that was fucking people left and right on um, roaming charges. It was, mm. and and it it was signing you up for the plan that you think you got, and then they they were charging through the nose. It ended up becoming like a class action lawsuit in like ninety, probably two thousand, two thousand one, two thousand. It became a class action lawsuit, and I was a part of it. I got my phone in New York, and um. And was very clear with what I wanted. And then when I moved to LA, I remember getting my bill and it was like $3,000. And I was like, hold on. And I, and, <laughs> yeah. and I called him. I was on the X show at the time. And I called them. And this guy was like, you can go fuck yourself. You can all but go fuck yourself. And he said, he, and, I, and he, I remember him saying, you're going to pay the charges. There's nothing you can do about this. And I said, actually, uh, that's not right. I said, uh, I have a nationally television, nationally syndicated television show, and I will be going on tonight, and I will talk about this. Yeah. And he went, he went, sure you do. I said, my name's Burt Kreischer. It's called The X Show, and we will be talking about this tonight, and I will be bringing up your name specifically. And Hilarious. I did. I did. And I was, and it was, I was steaming mad. And they cleared all my charges the next day, cleared all my charges really yeah and and like that's kind of like the that's the disappointing part to a lot of people where they're like i don't got a tv show like they can this yeah. guy was banking on screw you you know yeah. like he's just banking on i got the power here and so, you know power is like just power in any sense is just such a it's such a drug for people Fuck and it's like if yeah. you have that one moment where you could be like, you're not going to do shit about this. And it's like, he must have felt like he was, you know, Tommy Tough Nuts. And you're sitting there like, well, I got a little power too. And yeah. it's like, you know, it's just, it's that guy, if he could go back, he he probably lost his job. They probably were like, what are you doing here? And by the way, right like, after I did this, right after I did this, very shortly after there was a class action lawsuit and these uh, this company went out of i'm sure they went out of business i wish i could remember the name of the company that it but it, but it was a big class action lawsuit in the 2000s about this company and i remember going like after that seeing it in the news and i was like oh shit my business manager called like next day day week later whatever and was like hey that's been handled they they've taken care of it they've absorbed mm. all the ro- roaming charges because it, it was like it was so silly it was such a fucking silly well, it makes you think that power is a lot like come like when it's in your dick you're like I'm going to whack off to everything. And then you, yeah. you know, you, you use your power. And then afterwards you're like, what was I doing there? This podcast is brought to you by Sunday. Spring is right around the corner. And that means it's time to get your lawn on track. Let me tell you something. I absolutely love a good looking lawn. I think it's because I grew up in Florida. I appreciate a good lawn, but I have two dogs. I can't go out and use some complicated toxic lawn product to throw out on my lawn. I want to make sure that it's natural and, 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 and there are unwanted chemicals. Take all the guesswork out for me. Well, Sunday is more than a lawn care product. It's a customized lawn plan that works with nature. Take out all the guesswork and those unwanted chemicals so you can grow a beautiful lawn that's better for people, pets, and the planet. 
All I had to do is go to GetSunday.com, put in my home address, and their free lawn analysis tool takes all care of all the rest in just seconds. Sunday uses soil and climate data to create a tailored nutrient plan so you get all the stuff your lawn needs and nothing it doesn't. Sunday is made with ingredients that you can actually pronounce like seaweed, iron, that's a joke, iron, I was a joke, and molasses so you can grow better and <clears throat> feel better about it. All I have to do is attach a ready-to-use pouch to a garden hose and spray. Lawn care used to take up my entire day. The frustration I've had with this lawn at this house, you have no idea. Now it takes less than 15 minutes. Best of all, this stuff really works. Let Sunday take all the guesswork out of growing a greener, more beautiful lawn this spring. Go to getsunday.com slash BurtCast to get $20 off your custom lawn plan at checkout. That's $20 off your custom lawn plan at getsunday.com slash birdcast. This podcast is brought to you by Magic Spoon. This is how good Magic Spoon is. I just sat here to do the copy for this podcast and saw Magic Spoon and my mouth started watering. It is cereal. I'm a cereal person. I love cereal. I love a cereal in the middle of the day, maybe after a nap. <laughs> I love something sweet. I don't want all those calories that are attached with cereal. And I gotta be honest with you, the cereal I grew up on was not healthy. This cereal is for grownups. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carb in each serving. Only four, 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb, and GMO-free. And they've got some exciting news. For a limited time, Magic Spoon are releasing two new amazing flavors. Shut up. Cookies and cream and maple waffle? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm telling you, I love the blueberry is through the, I love the blueberry. Let's see what else they got. I'm telling you, it's the best because it's, it's, it's comfort. It's cereals, comfort food for me, for most Americans, I'd say. And it's, it's, you don't feel like you're overindulgent. So here's what you got to do. Go to magicspoon.com slash Bert to grab the new limited edition cookies and cream maple waffle. All I can think is I'm going to hit them up and go, Hey man, I think I should sample the product before I talk about it cookies and cream or maple waffle shut the fuck up maple waffle or customize a bundle of cereal to try today and be sure to use the promo code BERT at checkout to save five dollars off your order this offer is now good anywhere in the U.S. or in Canada but only when you use the promo code at checkout and Magic Spoon's so confident about their product it's backed with a hundred percent happiness guaranteed so if you don't like it for any reason and you will and you will I promise you that as me I love Magic Spoon They'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash BERT and use the offer code BERT to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this episode. If we're talking responsibly, like, you know, this is, and this goes back to what we were talking about originally, is, is speaking truth to power. Mm -hmm. I, I left, I left a negative Yelp review one time. Okay. And, uh, and, and at the time I was on travel channel and I was on, and I, and, and I remember Rogan being like, whoever leaves a negative Yelp review or something, I forget exactly how the, how it went down. But I remember saying on Rogan, actually, I left one. He was like, okay. no, I said, yeah, I was at this fucking place the other day and they fucking sucked. I said, it was in Baltimore. It was right by the stadium. I go in and I asked the guy, I'm, I just got off a flight. I was just coming into Baltimore to go to sleep. And I said to the guy, um hey what's a good local beer and he goes i don't know like coors light and i went <laughs> okay dude you have disappointed my meal that's like when you go uh any suggestion on the menu and they go everything's good that's like, exactly so, that, so the next thing the, jerry the ne very next thing i said i'll just take a heineken and then i go i'll tell you what what's what, what's good on the menu he goes everything's good and i go hey well like like what's like really good like what did you have for lunch and he goes i don't know you like turkey sandwiches? And I was like, is, and I'm an idiot. I'm like, is it good? And he goes, yeah. And he comes out and is the worst turkey sandwich I've ever had in my life. And I light the guy up. I even said the name of the restaurant. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I did. I, I, I don't know. I, I've talked very reckless on podcasts. And I have, no, sure. I have no reference of what I've said in the past. And I apologize <laughs> for everything I've ever said in the past. If I have slandered your business, <laughs> you are anything, I'm sorry. I am certainly sorry because I tried to stop after this because the guy reached out to me the guy that really I, the not the guy not the bartender it was the guy who owned the restaurant he reached out and he's like oh. hey man this fucking bums me out he was like first off 
I'm a huge fucking fan. Second mm. off, I have my entire life invested in this restaurant. I would much rather of you pull me aside when you were there. He goes, if I had known you were there, you would have eaten for free. He was like, I would rather you pull me aside and say, hey, man, this guy needs to be fucking fired than lighting me up on Rogan or on Yelp. And I'm, and I'm sitting there going like, I didn't know I had. I didn't know that. Like, I, I mean, this is this sounds silly to say, and I, no one's going to believe this, but like. I, I did Rogan when it wasn't that big. Like, well, like it's big now, but also, like we, we did Rogan I, when, 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 no, when, I, when you, you were like, people are listening to this. Like, that's when we started doing that. <laughs> totally. And, but also like you and I are talking right now, you're talking like yeah. you're hanging out. Like the, I, we're not sitting here being like, they're like thinking about the number of people listening or who could be listening in random Ohio town, you know, like, but I also don't agree with his perspective. Like, if I'm him, I'm saying I screwed up by hiring someone bad, by prepping my employee the wrong way. I have all this in my business. Can you give me a second chance? Can I give you, can I, is there a way I'm such a huge fan? And the fact, like, to me, like that's the double-edged sword. That's where nuance and context comes in. And it's the double-edged sword of the Yelp reviewer. Like I, one time, and you reminded me of this, I was in, um, I, it was recently and I'm with, I'm working with the nutritionist. So I, I would tell this nutritionist where I was staying and she would find me healthy options in the area of where I'm doing the show. What a, what an amazing thing she's doing. So yeah. I, I, she gives me a place it's called like, it's, it's like power cafe. It looked like it was from the nineties. Like it was like, it looked like a guy in a stringer tank top should be running the show. Like it was such a, like, it was like protein power cafe. It's in Indianapolis, I think. So I go to this place and on the walls, it has these like motivational posters, but they're like, you know, you got to outrun skinny or like outrun. You can't outrun your, your bad eating. It's like all those like motivational things that are kind of shitty. Like it's like, you, you know, skin, you know, n- nothing tastes as good as skinny feels. It's like those type of lines. Yeah. So I post. So I posted a video of it. Being hashtag like, Thinspiration. <laughs> hashtag Thinspiration. I posted a video of it on my Instagram stories, joking around. Like, I think it's funny that they're even putting up this poster. I had some women take the video, put it in a, like a, uh, a podcast that's about diet culture and go, look at this sign. We should go report them on Yelp. Oh now God. they're going, and I'm going, and I said to them, they took something that like, I'm making fun of it. You have a right to make fun of it. But now they're taking it and I go, no one that works at that po- protein powerhouse cafe has anything to do with those signs. That's from a, an office that put this whole place together. Like to me, that's dip- like, again, the double-edged sword, it's different. Like to blow them up on Yelp in Indianapolis when you live in Southern California, because you don't like the tone of their fitness signs, like Dude, go fuck yourself. That's someone's business. But then when it's someone at that work that they hired going, yeah, take the turkey, you stupid idiot. You're like, you have to, you have to hire better people. Like, how do you balance the two? You know? Oh, uh, dude. I, and yeah, I, I, I completely, I remember recording. I, I re- wanted to record someone doing something shitty. Mm. And my wife was like, and then what are you doing with that video? I was like, mm-hmm. fuck it. I'll post it. And she's like, and then you become the police. Is that what you yeah. are? And I was like, well, fuck them, right? They're they're breaking the law. She was like, no. She's like, you're not going to report them to your fans and then let your fans go after this person. That's that's Absolutely. not that's not what you do. And then I was like, but that's what everyone else is doing. And she was like, yeah. Are you are you better than the person that's recording the fucking person? She's like, fuck them. Just they're they're bad people. Just let it go. And I, I saw like, it with your wife couldn't be more right. I saw it with the pandemic. So I. I remember in the beginning of the summer, people were taking pictures of the beaches in Florida and they're like, look at these Florida idiots. And I'm like, yeah. first of all, they're outside. Second of all. And then I remember I was like, I, I was like, have you ever taken a fucking picture from the beach? Go take a picture from the ocean, looking up the beach. Everyone looks like they're on top of each other, humping each other. It's called yeah. perspective. That's what okay. happens when you take a picture like that. You can't tell. What are you going to take out your tape measure and put it against someone's picture? And then you're going to call them a fucking idiot because you want to take the moral high ground. It's like that's. And so people post that picture. They go, well, I'm in New York and look at the Florida idiots. And you're like, no, you're not better than these people. They went to the beach. They stayed six feet away. Why don't you go talk to someone that you disagree with instead of posting a picture online to feel good about yourself? And it's like, again, we all have that 
thing in us, just like you said, like, I, I want to post this online. I looked at that woman in the scooter. I want to post this online. And it's like, my girlfriend's like, what the fuck are you doing? And it takes you go. Yeah. I don't want to be an asshole. I don't need this. Yeah. In my life. I don't, like, I, and, yeah. I, and, and it's so funny is that, you know, when you talk about coronavirus and you talk about the way people are behaving and the, and, and, and the, the tattletaleness of it, yeah. like, I don't believe in tattletales. Like, I don't, I, I don't, I don't think, and that's so what, you know, what that gotcha on your cell phone thing. It's a tattletale. I don't believe in tattletales. I believe in handling shit. If you have a problem with someone, you should say something to them. And then if they start recording you, you the second a phone comes up, you have to stop speaking immediately and walk away. You're never yeah. gonna, you're never gonna fucking outbeat that fucking edit of no. when they decide that you start looking like an asshole and stop looking like an to asshole. Totally. That's why, but that's the moral high ground. You're never going to beat, especially with coronavirus. You're never going to beat. You're going to kill my Nana. You're never going to beat. So yeah. there's no, you're never going to beat. You're going to kill my Nana. You're right. You're never going to beat it. it. That's the end of the game. So people kind of take over that argument to be better than you. And it's like, they because morally they're correct so you can't go well yes. i don't know and it's like but and it's like me saying well i you know i want to spend thanksgiving with my family they're like well what about my net you know it's like you doesn't matter you they've they've got you they've checkmate i i watched a family i was here visiting my parents for thanksgiving there was a family doing a socially distanced outdoor they're doing all the right things uh, uh, no mass, just, just hanging with their family. They're outside. They are trying. They're legitimately trying. At one point, the like the grandma of the group, she looked just like my grandma, like Jewish grandma, Chanel, you know, wearing woman. She goes, okay, picture, picture. And they all go to huddle up and she goes, put on your mask. And it's like, what? They're putting on their mask because they're afraid of the social backlash. They weren't even wearing their mask. They're just like, Okay, put on the mask to 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 what? To a play for their for some cousin that didn't fucking come to their party that's gonna be like, oh, look at where are the mask. They're they're defending themselves to assholes that don't even know anything about it. And it's like, and you and you're like, what have we become at that point? Where it's like even grandma knows, uh-oh, you know, I don't want to get canceled. You're like, what, Nana? Like, <laughs> yeah, Nana, if you don't have the mask on, you might cancel yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Right. So it's like, it's just so interesting what we're like defending against before we have to defend against it. Well, I, what's I, cause I have my family's in Florida and all my friends growing up are in Florida yeah. and I, I get FaceTime calls and they're like, Look. they're completely living their lives. I mean, there's, I, no, I mean, I will tell you right now, sure. they are not only not scared of coronavirus, my mm -hmm. friends, I'm saying my friends, these, I'm not saying all the Floridians, my friends are not only not scared of coronavirus. I don't think they think it's a thing. Well, I was in Tampa uh, with your boy, Mike Calta. That guy's the best. I, I went on his greatest. show. I love Mike Calta. By the way, he got coronavirus. Didn't even know he had it. I know. He told me. He goes, I got, he was so excited he got it out of the way. He talked about it like it was like something on a to-do list. Oh, by the <laughs> way, his, he does. He no longer has the antibodies. I'm certain of that. And, and, I, and I watch him. I watch him out at dinner and I'm just like, God. And I, but I guess, you know, once you have it once and you realize I didn't even know I had it. And I, and I went and, and he went, didn't get sick in, in the slightest, like in the slightest. And then his other buddy, his best friend, one of my close friends, I won't say his name, but another one of our really good friends yeah. got it and was in the hospital and like hey. gave his son his last, like, here's where the money is. Here's what you got to do. Hey. I love you. You got to take care. Like he thought he was going to die. And see, it's that's scary. And it's like you, you come back again. These are scary things. These are real things. I was in Tampa. Tampa, they are, they are aggressively not into this coronavirus thing. Like Boca is a little different because it's a lot of like New York Jews. That I was about to say Boca. Much, Boca yeah, is yeah. Like, Boca's not Tampa. Boca's no, not Florida. No, no, no. Boca's Boca not Florida. Not, and Miami's like, not Florida. <laughs> no, I drove across the state to go do these shows. And it was like, there was a moment in the drive where I'm like, okay, we are not in, you know, Kansas anymore. Like I, I got over there. I went into the, like a gas station. I'm like, oh, this is Florida. Like, and I remember there was, <laughs> as you leave Boca, 
It's almost like from the Mar- the Marvel movie. Your mask starts disintegrating from nowhere. Your shirt turns into a tank top. You're like, wait, where the fuck am I going? Yeah, I got Oakleys on the back of my neck. I'm like, how did I become this way? I swear a to God. A beer shows up in your lap. You're like, I'm drinking and driving? Dude, you, you don't know how right you are. I took an Uber in Tampa. The guy had an open tall boy in the yeah. front. My girlfriend's with me. She goes, does he have a beer in the front? I go, sir. Like I sounded like, like, like I'm like, sir, is that a, I couldn't have been more of a wuss. I'm just like, sir, is that a beer in the front? He goes, he goes, Oh dude, it's from last night. I go, I'm, I, and I go, I was afraid. I go, there's no judgment. No one back here is judging you. We need to pull over. And he goes, what, what is from last night? I go, you can do whatever you'd like. I don't care what you did last night. I'm happy for you but I have to get out of this car with my girlfriend before we get on the highway, if you don't mind. And it's like, you see shit like that in Tampa all the time. And so what, like, what was it like in Tampa? What was the, what were the, oh, dude, were people wearing masks? It's uh, people were wearing masks, but it was like, if they weren't, you could tell it was a state. Like if, if and again, the shows were packed. Like, and I said to people, I was like, I said in the shows, I was like, you guys treated coronavirus like it was a season. And they were like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. And then I saw there was like an old guy in the front. I was like, look at this guy got the vaccine today. And now he's taking it out for a test drive. I was like, everyone come here, lick him, come over and lick him. And they're like, it made you kind of miss old times too. Cause you're like, they're hooting, they're hollering, they're laughing at themselves, which is like what you want in a comedy show. You, I don't agree with it, but I do love the attitude. Like, I love that they could take the joke about it. What if, what if, I mean, there's no way it's possible, but what if, what if the fear of the coronavirus, the, what if there were, what if they had statistics that they didn't share with us because mm. the, the, they just wanted to get Trump out and all these Trump states like Arizona, Florida, man, I went to Arizona, I think Arizona ended up voting for Biden, but um, when, when yeah. I was in Arizona, motherfucker. It was like, like, well, I, I've had this conversation. My, my dad kind of thinks that he's like, he's like, oh, there he goes. Corona will go away once he's not president anymore. And I'm like, well, I go. There's also like a little like it's like bringing like kicking out the manager and having a new manager who actually, you know, does some management, you know, like that, that, that could be a part of it, too. You know, like, you know, and he's like and, and it, it is interesting that like, I mean, what you're hearing about the vaccine, I just listened to Bill Simmons podcast. He had a writer from the Atlantic on. He's like, he was saying how there's so much negative press about the vaccine that it's not even, it's overtaking the press about how effective it is. Wait, and what's, you're like, what's, what's negative about the vaccine? Just that people won't take it. And, and, you know, when they go, oh, it's, you know, there's a Johnson and Johnson one that's like 66% affected or something like that. And when you hear 66%, you're like, well, what does that mean? You know, and but when the, you go look at the numbers, it's like there's been, you know, it, it it basically makes it so people don't have to go to the hospital anymore. And that was kind of the goal in the beginning where it's like, let's keep the hospitalizations down. And then we kind of went a whole another way where we're like, shut it all down. And it's like, OK. And it's like, listen, I, I, I don't agree with Florida, but I don't agree with New York either. Like the like the attitude in New York is like, you know, people walk around, you're like, dude, like we let's get coffee, you know, like from six feet away. And it's like, well, I don't know if I can do that. You know what I mean? So it's like, I think attitudes matter, but also you have to be realistic and not just out of your sorts. And like, uh, there was a little bit of a cowboy status in Tampa <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. I don't, I mean, I'd be, I've, I've seen, I've seen so many, I've faced, like I said, FaceTimes, videos, Instagrams where, where I'm sensitive, like, you know, we're very um my family is very uh very much still abiding by the rules Mm -hmm. but i i gotta be honest with you i and i part of me goes so why do i abide by the rules because i i'm I'm a weird guy like i'm a big rule follower but i often my wife has said this i often feel rules don't apply to me so like so like um what like boarding on an airplane Mm -hmm. i would never board before my group is called i would never <laughs> line up i don't line up but i'm with you also also i will do 
whatever I got to do to make sure I'm on the status where I board before everybody. So Absolutely. like, so yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. why I've, if maybe if I didn't have that, I'd break the rule. Well, I think also you're a product of your atmosphere in Florida. You see older people. I saw an old one. I talked about in the special. I, ta- I saw an old woman with a, with a, uh, an oxygen mask on inside at a restaurant at a table for 10. When you see that <laughs> and you're 36 and well, it's hard to not sit at the bar with your fa- parents in a, in, in as six feet away, appropriate way. Yeah. When you're in New York and you don't see that New York, all you see is people like walking by with their heads down. Your atmosphere is your reality. You're going to go, I, 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 I'm as scared as the most scared person. I'm as not scared as the most not scared person. That's kind of how it works. And that's why when you see pictures from Florida, you're like, that's, that's a fascinating, you know, the, the analogy for that is, is I don't mind snorkeling with 50 Japanese people at all. Like, but snorkeling by myself is fucking terrifying. <laughs> well, what do you mean? I, I, like sometimes when you go, like, like we went out, we, uh, we went out snorkeling in Hawaii. I'm talking yeah. about sharks. Uh, we go uh, out snorkeling <laughs> in Hawaii and it was just me and my family on this boat. And I was actually kind of scared. So I was like, so you're just going to drop us off on a fucking reef. And then we're going to just snorkel. And we are fucking shark bait. And we got out and there was literally a boat full of 50 Japanese people. And I was like, yeah, put me in the water with them. <laughs> I, 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 my odds are better. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're in there. There's more food. I'm like less likely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're a product of your atmosphere that again, it's like, when someone's freaking out on a plane while there's turbulence, I get more freaked out. Yeah. When, so, when, so, when someone's next to me going, like if I'm next to a guy who has his pilot stripes on and he goes, yeah, you're cool. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to believe him. And whether that's rational or not, that's just how humans act. My buddy was, my buddy used to do the, uh, do the he, a cameraman for um, hurricane hunters. So they take mm. the, they take the plane into the hurricane. Oh my God. And he said, it's crazy. It's the worst turbulence he's ever been in, but everyone's so calm that you're like, I guess nothing's going to happen. Yeah. I, and also you're with the, like the pilots in the front going, yeah, we're cool. You're not seeing like when you're in a plane and you don't see the pilot, you can only imagine that he's crying in the yeah. front seat. Like, like, you know, like when, when I see, I just need to see <laughs> one Sully Sullenberger, like, yeah, we're good. You know, like, and you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Oh God, I guess this cool. is ter- just turns on the thing. This is fucking terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's like, you're driving. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, um, that's interesting. So what's New York? Like? Are, are you going back to New York? So I'm going back this Friday. Um, I've been here since December. So I've been here living with my parents. My girlfriend was here for like the first few weeks. And then she's like, I'm going to go to my family now. I'm going to deal. I've been dealing with like, my mom is like, my parents are like, it's living with the Costanzas. I'm in Del Boca Vista. It is like, I go work out in this field and I do podcasts. I'm I'm doing my Joe Rogan fantasy camp here. Like it's, uh, and I'm eating dinner with them and I'm doing a show in West Palm tonight. My parents are bringing all their friends. My mom's like, don't do you know, the dirties. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Oh God, this is going to be brutal. Are you at the improv tonight? Yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. Segura was just at the West Palm improv. He said it was fucking awesome. I've never been there before. I'm so pumped just to do oh. shows, you know, like, you know, it's like, it's just feels so good. Like those Tampa shows again, when you're on stage, you're making fun of them for the virus and they're laughing and you're like, Oh dude, you know, like I yeah. love a club like that. I, I mean, I'm, I haven't, I, I last I, it's been a while since I've been in a comedy club yeah um but I was but I the I was in the last one I did was uh wise guys and I had such a fucking great time and that's a great right. club too yeah I had such yeah. a great time I'm, I'm ready to get back in I, I'm I'm won't be doing stand-up for probably like four more months but uh what are you, are you gonna go back to like are you gonna do clubs or are you gonna go back to doing theaters do you like to did you like doing the outdoor ones was it fun i liked i li- really like the outdoor ones i would love to do um I'm, I'm working on doing something a little different than i did but still same theme because i i really enjoyed the party of it the party aspect of it mm. of like making it a tailgating new tailgating people partying having a good times watching but, sunsets but that's one of those things that like you know you know your audience it fits like 
Yeah. You and that's all we want. We want the whole show experience. Like when you have like someone opening for you that you're like, he's making people feel uncomfortable, you go, Oh, this is on me. Like, you know, when you go on stage and you see like the fire pits and people are laughing, they're with their family, that's gotta make you feel like a million bucks. You're like, we're Bro. giving what a night we're giving people. I, I said that in Philly. Philly punchline has a great outdoor, like with like sparkle lighting and stuff. And I was one of the first shows they did in this like one area with like you know the twinkle lights and it looked like a scene out of a rom-com and i said to them and everyone's drinking hot cocoa with alcohol in it and i said to them i go isn't this a moment like isn't this great you got the night you got the picture we don't want to do this next year yeah. but we you know you got the instagram photo that you'll never like oh that was the night we were outside and yeah. it was nice and you know what i mean like it felt good to like have that with those people Oh, it's my, it's, po it's probably, you know, the first bus tour I ever did was so memorable in such a, in, so, in such a, a, a way that I'll never be able to recapture that. It was so fucking incredible. It was such yeah. a great little slice of life. And then my next bus tour, I think was birdie boy. And then that it was, it was just, I mean, by the way, it was, it was, it was muted because we, we only did like a month of it. But it mm -hmm. was fucking, I mean, we're talking about two shows at the Beacon. Like, just like. Unreal. It was unreal. It was unreal. And then, and then, uh, fucking, the, it's just transitioning into the Hot Summer Nights. I, I'll never be able to recapture just the, the real slice of getting to know our country and, and, and respecting our country and for what it has. Meaning, meaning respecting how fucking big Texas is. Or it's, or how few things yeah. are are on on the way from from California to Amarillo, you know, like like it's just like <laughs> like really like just yeah. how cool the middle of the country is, and like that you can go from Wichita to Kansas City to Oklahoma to like all these little jumps that you do Dude. Indianapolis and and make these runs, and how badass like the people in Chicago are, like I mean. It really was probably one of my favorite things I've ever done in my career because, it, like like you said, it's like you're ne you're never going to get that slice of life. And I got to do it during a pandemic, and I got to share something with people who, at the time, were like going through things and and wanted to experience life again. And this was a safe way to do it. I'm dude. I'm like through the roof. I would like to do. I would like to do memorable stuff like that yeah. continuously. Now here's the here's the rub is we both know just how fucking awesome a comedy club is and yeah. nothing ever not even theaters eh, there's some theaters but doing stand-up in a comedy club is the fucking gig it's the gig it is when the greatest i always say to people i'm like i go i i the the moment you love is when the laugh makes the room feel like it's sway like yeah. when everyone is on the same page and you're like holy shit, this is like, and like, and you're talking about something stupid. Like I, I did, a, I've been doing a joke about 69ing and then I'm just like, and it's like, I'm, and right now it makes me appreciate it more because I love the stuff that like we do. Like I love doing yeah. stupid I fucking, joke about 69ing. Yeah. And it's like, I don't need someone to tell me, oh, you're doing a dick joke about 69 I don't give a fuck. I want everyone. And I'm sitting there going with my tongue like, ah, ah, and people are laughing at it, at it as much as I laughed at it in my head. And it's like, I'm like, and, and with everything going on in the world, things are so serious. It's like, man, doesn't that feel good to not be on Twitter with someone going and everybody's dying. It's like, doesn't that feel good to just talk about licking a vagina during a 69? <laughs> Dude, let me I, i'll tell you my one of the things that has been bothering me about me is like that i i really don't like i don't enjoy the negativity i it doesn't yeah. help me it doesn't i don't process well uh there was an article i saw an article today um on google i'm, I'm gonna see if i can find it mm -hmm. that uh it was about um it's this young lady went to this uh liberal arts college uh, uh all girls uh all girls liberal arts college in boston a very eighty thousand dollars a year is what it costs to go there wellesley 
I, I don't know. I, I forget the name. I, I wish I could. But the um, just the headline, it bothered me because I knew if I read the headline, I had to be serious. The, the, <laughs> she got like, I knew that I knew the that tone. I couldn't. Yeah. And that it, that even me writing a joke about this very serious headline would be like, there's no it's not it's not my strong suit you know it's like serious comedy i'm not like the guy on stage that like gets angry and and is like the fuck's going on with these fucking you know things or i i like silly i like silly i like i like not not silly like without intention but like just being i like to laugh and the what makes me laugh is oddly enough is just fucking goofy shit Dude, there's, I, I yell at The Bachelor on my Instagram. I do it every Monday night, and I do it because I think the show is hilarious and dumb and fun. It is the lightest show. It's one man dating 30 women. Like, yeah. if you take that seriously, I don't know how you're living in this world. Yeah. And, like, the the guy was dressed the same as the woman. They were wearing the same clothes, so I'm doing the double mint, you know, song. I'm like but I'm singing it in the Mentos commercial thing. I'm going, I'm trying to fuck you. Like I'm like singing to it, whatever being stupid. And like recently the bachelor, like Chris Harrison had to step down and it's like, you have to talk about it. Like you have to talk now, this very serious subject of racism of how we handle race in the country has now entered into the bachelor. And it's like, you can't ignore it. You have, and, and you're sitting there going, like, and I watched the Chris Harrison video. I go, yeah, he sounded tone deaf. He sounded bad. And then you go, yeah, what did okay, he say? Gonna... What did he say? What did he, I didn't, I didn't hear what he said. He basically, there's a girl on the show. Her name's Rachel, who some pictures came out and there's rumors and news that has come out that she has pictures of her at like a fraternity formal where they're dressed in antebellum theme. I, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. So I, I know that she's dressed, she's at a, a fraternity formal that is not um that that is some uh, that is considered racist i I, and she's dressed in old whatever so and and i don't mean to whatever that topic there's pimps up hose down it was a very popular formal (laughs) keep going (laughs) so she's also there's rumors that she was bullying people for dating black people but she's on the uh, and and she's on the season with the first black bully someone for dating a black that's such a weird the it's a horrible like the stories about her but she so then Chris Harrison gets questioned about her on the show on, on extra. And he goes into this kind of, he, he rambles as much as I just did where he, and, but the rambling included like that was 2018 as if, you know, you shouldn't know better in 2018. And it's like, it's like, dude, you sound, yeah, yeah. They're like, and so now every joke I make, whenever Chris Harrison comes up, I'm like, and to in conclusion, racism did not uh, started before 2018. Like I make fun of that, yeah. but like because I'm trying to make a serious thing silly, and it, it's like again you have to think about it because this is our job. We're supposed to be professionals. Your job as a professional is to walk the tight wire where you can make a serious subject silly while also acknowledging that the subject is serious as well. Yeah, it's <laughs> it, it's if you can find a way to get in and out of it where people realize. Yeah, I obviously I don't want anyone to feel bad. Obviously. I don't want anyone feeling bad, but there I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I it's funny. So now I, just as you start talking about it, I'm like, I know nothing about this is where my brain is these days. I not only know nothing about this subject, I know nothing about The Bachelor. I think <laughs> I think it, I thought he I thought he was black. Yeah, Matt James, he's black. So, so this girl, this girl who bullied people about dating black people is trying to black, date a black guy. Th- this is the rumor that came out about her, and well, the first show's of all, already been taped, and she's now in the final three. Oh, shut the fuck up! Yeah. So there's oh, like as a producer, so, you gotta love that. You're like, our ratings are going through the roof. So there's a thing where it's like, again, the producers like they, he meets her family, and they kind of like hint at like we're meeting the racist family, and you're like. And then it ends up being like a normal date. And you're like, it's like the producer, you can see all that's wrong with everything going on in the way the whole thing is edited and put together. You know, like yeah. this is what Hollywood is. Hollywood will tell you how evil and horrible someone is while capitalizing off of the evil, horrible shit. And it's like, 
Again, Wait. this is a show that has many racial issues. This is a show, and this is a show that like Asian men don't make it past 15 minutes on the show. Like there's, the, you know, like they, they, Asian men don't do well in the show. It's just, that's just a fact. And then like, they, this is our first black bachelor. The show has been on for 40 seasons. Like, oh, shit. like, like, like again, like it, it's interesting where it's like an audience is getting mad at Chris Harrison for making a stupid statement like that. But the audience allowed for them to have, white bachelors for 20 seasons or 40 some odd seasons. So it's like, yeah, you know, where again, context, nuance, where does it, that's crazy. So wait, I, I've never watched the bachelor. Is it all races of women? Yeah, they, they, but they're recently, there's been a lot of people that have like, we have to diversify this show. It's very, Fuck yeah, white. dude, it, I'd want all Indian chicks. I think <laughs> Indian chicks are so fucking hot. Like very I would beautiful. be like, if I was a bachelor, I'd be like just Indian chicks. Well, that's the thing. Like if the batch, it's always interesting to me that the bachelor, like, wouldn't you think he has a type and then they would try to cast towards that type? Like, what if the, <laughs> like, why, why is there never like, like, the, like if I was the bachelor, like I would want curvier women. Like I like curvy women. Like why? <laughs> the last thing you want to hear is the bachelor going. So I'm into black chicks, but not like that black, like, you know, kind of like <laughs> Halle Berry, you know, not like, never, not like. Not like Shanae, like you know. <laughs> Nobody can be too honest about their taste. Like by the way, like the what word. sucks is what sucks is you know there, people have certain tastes that like this people are thing. into certain things, and you can't. So it's crazy that like if you're not attracted to Asian men, does that make you racist? If you're not They're, attracted to white men, does that make you racist? I have a friend. I have a good friend who's fucking smoke show black chick smoke show, mm. and by the way. She knows I'm talking about her right now. <laughs> she knows I'm talking about her. And I asked her, I said, have you ever dated a white guy? And she goes, nah, I don't, you guys smell weird. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I was like, that's, you realize you how fucking. You sniffing your armpits. You're like. Yeah. I was like, do you realize what that would sound like? If if you said, Bert, have you ever dated a black chick? I go, I like the smell of you guys. She was like, well, I'm just being honest. And I was like, don't. I go, don't ever <laughs> say that to anybody. That's just fucking not horrible. my type. Yeah, yeah. She I, goes. I, I just ate black guys. I just ate black. I want, I want like a real man. And I went. Hold on. Do you realize what the <laughs> fuck you're saying? The more it keeps going, the more it's just like I don't want you, Bert. Like it's like it's like I was like, listen, I'm not hitting hats. on they you. Don't have, uh, yeah, yeah. They they don't wear hats. They don't have beards. Um, <laughs> their name's not Bert. Yeah, they just keep going on and on. Yeah, it's 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 one of those things. We actually on the UA podcast we had uh, Ronnie Chang did a great. Ronnie Chang is so fucking funny. He's so funny. He, he did so a great piece funny. for the Daily Show about this topic with like the difference between being racist and having a type and how difficult a subject that is. Like, and wow, I never he, thought about that because I've been out of the game. My types, my types, I'm sure is is triggering to someone is is uh, rednecks. <laughs> That's my wife. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone, listen. I, and I, let's, I've said this before. It's like a lot of women write into the podcast. They're like, I don't, you know, does he think I'm hot? And I'm like, you are hot to someone. I always say, I'm like, when I say and it's become inspirational, but it sounds really bad. I was like, there's guys online masturbating to feet. Okay. Yeah. You, whatever you are, you're someone's foot. Like someone masturbates to you. So if they're on the date with you, then they're into you. The, the penis is too strong a dictator for to let a man go on a date that the penis didn't want to go on. So trust in the disgustingness of men. And it's like, yeah. that's the thing where everyone is someone's type. Like if I saw that my, I got this question the other day. So if, if my girlfriend, I saw that like all her exes were like chubby Jewish guys, I'd be like, hey, this makes sense. Um, I'm okay with that. But then if I wasn't allowed to see her friends and family, I'd be like, okay, I, I I think that this is now mean to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, that's really interesting because um, that is fucking really interesting. That is just really it, fucking interesting that you do have a type and, and like, is it, is it racist if you're not attracted to black women? Like if you it, just go, but see, here's the thing is I go, how can you say that? Cause you, I, I can there's anyone from any race i'm trying to think of a race that i that i wouldn't be attracted to but i've found people of every race that i've been attracted to 
I wouldn't, I agree with I wouldn't you. I've shelve been attracted, it out. I've been I tried attracted to, by the way, I tried to write a joke about this for a while and it just came really? off so fucking insensitive. <laughs> it, it can sound it, I again like I I try like let me put it in my own terms. As a Jew, I've always wanted to marry a Jewish woman. And to Ooh. me, so it's like I've always wanted and my I had a friend in college was like, that's racist, man. You will only if you'll only date Jews. I'm like, I'm not. It's not that I won't only date Jews, but I'm making I'm kind of looking at it from a mathematical position. I think that when I date someone who's Jewish, I feel a certain familial element where it's like we understand summer camp. We understand going to temple over the high holidays. I mentioned Boca. They know what I'm talking about. Like, you know, like there's certain and, and that. Uh, that is a part of attraction is having commonalities. That's why a lot of parents look alike. It's because we're narcissists and we want to be with someone that makes it feel like family. And I don't know, that's not a good explanation, but that when I think about like why being into Jewish women, I'm like, but I have a connection with them that I can't explain that maybe I wouldn't, I'm kind of like banking that my connection with them is going to work out more than maybe with someone that I don't have a lot of commonalities with. And that's, that's just for Jews. The future of toileting has arrived. Okay, it's technically been around for centuries, but hideously expensive, costing thousands of dollars. Now, the brand new Hello Tushy 3.0 modern bidet attachment is here to level the playing field. It's stylish, eco-friendly, easy to install, and affordable. That is the most important part about this. It is affordable. Hello Tushy 3.0 doesn't just cleanse your butt with a precise stream of fresh water. It cleans itself before and after its use with the Smart Spray automatic self-cleaning nozzle. It attaches to your existing toilet. No electricity or additional plumbing required and cuts the toilet paper use by 80%. So Hello Tushy bidet pays for itself within the first few months because with Hello Tushy, you don't wipe at all. I don't wipe at all. You just poop, spray, dry, go. And sanitation is simple. The Schmutz Shield offers easy cleaning, and the knobs are naturally antimicrobial. Already got a tush on your pot? Upgrade to the new 3.0 model. And if you are new to the revolution, join the millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now as they have clean butts with every wipe. I'm telling you, I absolutely, and this is clean water. I love it. It sprays on your ass, removes the poop completely so you don't sit on bacteria all day long because that causes hemorrhoids, yeast infections, UTIs, itchy assholes, itchy assholes, itchy, fuck itchy assholes. And you're not going to, to use a bunch of toilet paper. That's what's great. Go to hellotushy.com slash birdcast, get 10% off your order and free shipping. I, I think also, if I'm not mistaken, can tell me if I'm wrong, but I, I think also the biggest reason that that was like an, an old stereotype about Jewish moms wanted their kids to marry Jewish kids was mm. uh, uh, keep, that we have to keep our race going. Don't forget well, that, they tried to exterminate us. I went to Birthright. I went to Israel. And when you go, you go to the Holocaust Museum and you see the numbers. This is actually a crazy story. We go to the Holocaust Museum and you see the numbers and like it's staggering how many. So and you're exactly right. They want the Jews and you see it in Israel are very afraid of just disappearing off the face of the earth. And I remember we go to the Wailing Wall. My group were on this birthright thing and we're a bunch of new yorkers and you could just tell who the new yorker jews were that moved to israel are like you can just see them they're walking just at down the, they're the at the front of the line they're like yeah, totally. I, I got up here <laughs> <laughs> totally annoying totally just like yelling about stuff so this guy walks by and he's like where are you guys from like he's obviously a new york jew we're like new york he goes Oh, welcome. He starts talking to us. He's like the guy in the Seinfeld episode that walks into the Chinese restaurant. And he's like, Mr. Rosenberg's always here. Remember, he sits right down. It was <laughs> yeah. like that guy. So he goes, he goes, where are you guys from? We're like, New York. He starts talking to a few of us. And then he's about to leave. He goes, OK, got to go. And as he's leaving, he goes, marry Jewish. And then just walks away. <laughs> marry Jewish. It was like it was like a Mel Brooks movie. Like I was like, That's this guy. Perfect. And it's all from fear of like, we need this to keep going. We need the tradition, you know, it's tradition. It's all that stuff. And like my grandfather was big in the Jewish community. Like he, he, all his friends were from the temple. All his friends yeah. were Jews in the area. And it's like, I think he, he was one of those people that definitely feared the idea of like, you just kind of, it, it fizzles out. Like, so then, so then here's the question. Cause 
ultimately one day, and and I, I mean I mathematically this has to happen, is yeah. one day white people white people will be a minority. Mm-hmm. Like Irish people, Irish white or whatever. You know, this kind that's sunburned. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> And it will that be racist when white people try to band together to keep their race alive? Yeah, I, I, I guess it, it, I guess it would be considered racist. I, I, I mean, I'm not saying that's an easy or right thing to. to yeah. I could see someone right now is turning off the podcast, just like, God damn it, shut the fuck up. That's <laughs> not racist, and I don't mean to like. I'm just saying like. You know, all of these conversations come down to power. It comes down to who's the person on the American Airlines call center that has the power. And it's like, and again, a lot of it's social too. And it's like, and it's, you know, unsaid things between the lines and it's hard to even say. I tried to, I tried so hard to, I, I, I used to that used to be my angle was like those uncomfortable things I wanted to explore, but then you, mm-hmm. then you'd misstep as you would back. At, so like what happened is when you were young, when I was younger, you could misstep and say something absolutely horrible and no one would say a thing to you. They'd be like, mm-hmm. like you would, And then all of a sudden I remember the first time I had a joke about, about, um, about, uh, trying to get my wife to give me a blow job. And I was like, I tried the sensitive approach you know where you slide it in her mouth while she's sleeping and and i was like you're dreaming you're dreaming you're snorkeling in the keys feel the fish bouncing off your chin i and remember so, this joke yeah 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 i know a this girl, joke. a girl in new york came up to me and was like in front of a bunch of people doing a meet and greet comes up to me and goes like fucking shaking angry shaking hey. and she goes you're advocating rape and and she's at, obviously she it Clearly, if like I don't know if people believe in triggering or whatever, but she was triggered. Like so that that joke upset her, really upset. I her. totally believe in it. I, yeah, I totally believe in it. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the people. It was funny because the people with me sitting with me, they're like, "Oh, it's a fucking joke," and it is a joke. It really is a joke. But I wanted. Sure. I was what's what sucked about this moment is I didn't care to defend the joke. I wanted to hear her point of view. Like that's mm. as a comic. I think most comics are like. Well, I want to hear something. Else. I want to hear another idea. I don't want to just hear my own ideas. I want to hear another idea. Yeah, and I was absolutely. like, and they're like, get the fuck out of here, bitch. And it was a lot of women uh, telling her, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. It's comedy. Learn how to fucking take a joke. And then I was like, in my head, I was like, clearly someone slid a dick in her mouth while she was sleeping. Probably yeah, yeah, an uncle, yeah, yeah. probably something really traumatic. And, and I was like, I wanted to hear her opinion. And she was so mad. She wouldn't talk to me. She stormed out and people were, it was so uncomfortable. And I really, honestly, never really told that joke again after that because I was like, I was like, man, my intent up on stage is never to get someone shaking angry. I totally, I totally agree with that. You again, intent, and when you see it, you go, oh, okay. Now that I know that feeling is out there from the things I'm saying, I got to rewrite the position. Yeah. I got to figure oh, out another way, dude, or I don't I, even I, need this. I had a joke about. Uh, I had a joke about. Um, my buddy dating a black chick and, and it, it's interesting. It was, it was a premise I came up with and then I, and I'm, and I tried to work out and I did it a couple things. And and what I found is that it was really easy to work it from the power perspective of the black woman's point of view towards the white guy's point of view. But mm-hmm. the second you flipped it from the white guy's point of view to the black woman, to the black woman, it was extremely, um, uh not cool like yeah the whole yeah, premise was the premise the premise that worked was do you ever walk into the house and he's doing some some real white shit that you're like oh my god please and this white this black chick in the audience was like fuck yes non-stop and she <laughs> lit this guy up and the place was rolling yeah, rolling yeah, yeah. and i'm tagging it and i'm working this bit and the second i flipped it and i was like you ever go into the house and she's doing some black shit. And he was like, yup. No one would laugh. Everyone was like, fuck. And yeah. And the and, and the and the the punchline was uh the, the punchline was <laughs> was I was soon corrected on the punchline, but the punchline was uh uh you gotta hang out with a, a black person all day, every day. Like 
and but it was that was the punchline. But it was funny when I said it to the black chick about the white guy. But the sure. second I did it to the black guy, the white guy about the black chick, it wasn't funny. And and but it got laughs. It got enough laughs where it was like working. And I was like, I'll figure it out. And I was in DC. I got to give a shout out to this fan. I, I was in DC, and this black chick comes up to me. I'm in the meet and greet line, and uh, she comes up. She's cool as. And by the way, she's beautiful, fucking yeah. beautiful. And she goes, "Hey, uh, huge fan." And I was like, "Oh, thanks." She goes, "I just, I know you're like a sensitive guy, and I just wanted to just give you an insight." And I said, "What's that?" And she goes, "When you make um, that joke, it makes me feel like you wouldn't fall in love with me." And I was, and I looked at her, and I was like, and I was like, "No, that's not what I mean." She goes, I, uh, "She goes, I didn't think that's what you meant, but I just want you to know." And she goes, "And I can't reiterate this enough. I'm a huge fan. That joke made me feel." less than human and i went really she goes yeah and i I don't think that's your intention on that joke so you need to like if you're going to keep telling it you got to really figure it out because i know that's not what you meant and i was like i gave her a hug and i was like that is not my what a compassionate empathetic way to come at it like i yeah because yeah and that's that is like the beauty of like someone understanding stand-up where you're like she's like i know you're trying for something it just didn't fly that way and Dude, that's, that's so an amazing many, person i've been so blessed with people pulling me aside and maybe it's because I, I maybe it's it honestly isn't that that i maybe i am a good person and people know that and and then and they go i see what you're trying to do it's not working i had a joke about uh you get dating. What, it, you, go ahead sorry to interrupt but you get what you give i i truly believe that if you're a person that gives that out people will give it back to you and yeah go ahead i'm sorry i had a joke i had a joke and by the way i, I feel I feel stupid even I, I feel worried even telling these jokes because I, I said them on stage. Like I said sure. them on stage recklessly and I thought they were funny. And <laughs> yeah. but then and then this is the growth of comedy is like I had a joke where I was talking about dating, that dating was ridiculous. It's not all the shit you do on dating is not the stuff that you do when you're married. And I by the way, I didn't even realize this this was a bad premise. I was like, mm. I was like, you go out on dates, you go to a movie, you go out to dinner, none of that shit happens when you're married. You guys want to find out if you're compatible pick her up on a saturday adopt a dog take it out to the woods stab the dog if you guys can come back if you can come back if you can come back and have a pleasant dinner after you've murdered an animal then yeah you probably do be a good married couple and and this so woman aggressive. this one yeah, is so aggressive that, and, and by the way the laughs i'm getting are like horrible dudes like me and you going yeah kill a fucking yeah, dog kill, you murder and, it, cut its head off yeah I was in Chicago and uh and a woman came up to me and said, um, you gotta lose that dog bit. And I said, What do you mean? She goes, It's not who you are. It's not who you are. You love animals, and I know you love animals. Yeah. And if someone stabbed your dog, and I went, Whoa, no one's stabbing my dog. And she went, Every dog is someone's dog. Like <laughs> you're you're missing this so she goes, You don't you can't hear. She said, she said to me, she goes, I think what you're hearing is shrieks. And you're thinking it's laughs. She yeah. goes, I'm in the audience. It sounded like shrieks. And I was like, for real? She was like, lose. I never told that joke ever again. I it's it's so funny you say it because I I what the the whole point of that story is that we are listening for a certain type of laugh. We're yeah. not listening, we're not listening, we're not hearing like like you know that like alt comedy laugh where people go, ha, and it's not a real laugh. Yeah. It's like it's like the good point laugh. Ha! And you're like that's not what out. I want. Yeah, get out. out. Yeah, 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 get out of here. You know, Joe Not Blum. all on comics, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. When the references it, line up and you're like, yeah, that would be every John Hughes movie. Good call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Set up, set up 90s reference, set up, set up 90s reference Ninja Turtles. And and but it only that laugh only happens in all rooms. It's not even the yeah. comic. It's the room going, ah, and so when we hear a shriek, we're like, "Ooh, I gotta get rid of that. I gotta, I gotta move out that shriek." Like, I when I was opening, you know, Michelle Wolf, I was opening for her on the road before all this like kind of happened, and um, before she moved into Chappelle, before she <laughs> moved into the into the uh, you know into the mansion, I guess. Um, but she ha- would get like, she's like, uh, she was always on the lookout for like cleaning out the claps. And it's like, how do I clean out the claps? And like, I think that's such an interesting thing because that shows how great of a comedian Michelle is where it's like, she wants the laugh, just like us. We all want the laugh. And it's like, when Bill Burr hosted um, SNL, 
over the summer, I watched him work on his set in New York, like on this, he was doing the street corner thing like that. We're, you know, so I was kind of like, I don't know him, but I was like, just kind of quietly watching the set. And he, I was like, Oh, this is going to be good. Okay. And he's working on it. He's working on the set, just like any of us would work on a set. And then he did it on SNL. And I watched, I was like, I just want to see what Twitter is going to say about this. Cause I knew the topics he was getting into yeah. and people were responding saying, this is hateful. This is, and saying like, and, and I kind of tweeted out and I got into this like debate with someone and they were like, and I was like, I basically was like, how could you, e what people don't understand on Twitter, what they, do, what they basically look beyond or ignore is that like, he went on stage in front of thousands of people and tested that at no point did he get no laugh and go, well, fuck them. No, he was like, I'm going to fashion this together and it's like the idea that he was like i'm gonna go up to make a few points on snl is like so misguided on yeah. what we do it's oh, like yeah. no i'm going on there to make laughs that hopefully produce points like it doesn't go point then laugh if you're up there to make points that's called a ted talk now now we're doing a different type of show it's just yeah. so interesting when people miss that we are listening in a different, in the same way. My dad's like, I didn't like that joke. Yeah, dad, I heard nobody laugh too. <laughs> like, <laughs> like my dad's always like, they really hated that. I, I know. Silence I was deafening on my side also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, it was loud and clear, their silence. You know, so it, <laughs> your, si your silence is deafening. Trust <laughs> yeah. me, I'm used to silence. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. What happened? Fuck me. Uh -oh. A friend of mine died. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just got to, my phone just went off and I looked and uh, a comedian, a comedian friend of mine oh my passed God. away. I think, let me see. One man was killing. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm sorry. No, no. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Did you ever know Eric Myers? Yeah, he's from Eric here. Yeah, he's from Kissimmee. Real high energy, very funny. Real high energy. He just passed away. Oh, my God. Yeah. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Super fuck, nice fuck. guy, but funny. The nicest guy in the world. The nicest guy in the fucking world. Was he in L.A. or was he in Florida? He was in fucking Amarillo. He got... Boy. Let me... Uh, I'll read it to you. This Dave Come on, Williams stop just, it. Amarillo, Texas. One man. I didn't know him well, but I, I, you know, we crossed paths. That guy also. I remember I crossed his path when he was going on America's Got Talent. Did he do one of those shows? I'm sure he did. And he did. was doing his five minute set, and this guy's five minute set murdered. He hard. It says one man was killed yesterday after buying, being hit by a van on U.S. 87, the Texas mm -hmm. Police Department. So it was the Department of Texas. According to DPS, Eric Myers, age 40 of Kissimmee, Florida, was walking in the northbound lane before 6 a.m. when he was struck by a 2017 Ford van. The incident happened about four miles south of da 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 da. It was dark at the time of the crash. Myers was wearing dark colored clothes. The driver did not see Myers in the roadway and struck him. Hey. Fuck, man. Let me tell you, I wanted to have him on my podcast so bad, and I reached out and we played phone tag. But, um, he, you know, he had, I don't know if you knew this, but he had some issues with alcohol. I, I had heard that. I, yeah. so I was kind of just waiting to hear how yeah. this happened. And so, well, I, when you, when you, I mean, I, yeah, you hate to assume, but when you, yeah. when you hear it six forty five in the morning, walking yeah, yeah, down yeah. A, a highway, you, you got to assume that the demons had gotten the best of him again. I not, I did not, I, I mean, doesn't matter if they did or they didn't, he's gone. There's no fucking. Yeah. No, there's no i don't want to shame him into his his death but that that is absolutely horrible he was the nicest fucking guy man he um he and i worked at the west palm improv with mm -hmm. louis ck uh probably 17 years ago come on yeah and uh and louis loved him louis really loved him and he was he is so he was such a funny guy that like everything he did was funny and and he wasn't even trying to be funny like at the time he wasn't drinking and uh and he had a high-pitched voice you know ha yeah ah. and uh 
and he came in he was so young too i was probably 20 i was probably 30 maybe he was got to be he'd had to be like 25 or something 24 mm. and he was like he was like hey they just gave me a credit card i was like oh fuck he's like <laughs> I, I got a free credit card i think he just gave me a credit card and he's like i bought i bought 700 dollars worth i just maxed it out i got all this uh, recording equipment i'm gonna start recording my sets and i was like oh eric hey here we he's go like, Doc, he's <laughs> like the doctor gave me uh have you ever had uh xanax and i was like <laughs> yeah he's like doctor gave me like 90 pills i'm gonna i take them all the time <laughs> just like he was just he was so fucking funny but then he wasn't even trying to make you laugh he was just we shared a condo for the weekend mm -hmm. and i just had georgia i just had georgia and we worked with louis ck and, and Louis loved him. Louis was laughing so hard at him in the back, laughing so fucking hard at him. Damn it, man. I Life's short. Life is fucking short. He had his shit together, too. The last time I texted with him, he had his shit together, man. Like he was, because he had had some rough runs, and I, I would never share those out of school. I think those are mm -hmm. kind of go, go with him. Let me see if I can find my last text with him. I'm sure it's Eric with a C. Eric. My last text with him. God. I thought it was Eric with a K, no? It is with a K, but I spelled it in my phone with a yeah, C. Yeah, yeah. Of course. I... <laughs> hey, buddy, it's Eric Myers. I was so nice to see you yesterday. I'm here until May. I'd love to do your podcast. And I was like, definitely. What's your schedule look like? And he goes, can you do Friday or Saturday? I was like, and he was like, how's Monday? And then he wrote the next test. He wrote, dude, I watched your Netflix special three times. I loved it. Total genius. That's the last thing he said to me. And I didn't fucking reply. I should reply right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> hey, man. You good? Hey, yeah. what's He's, up? God, he was, uh, he was a very sweet kid. And I think uh, he was a very, very sweet guy. Uh, very. And, and so fucking talented. So funny. I mean, like. The, the, people like it, it's weird it's funny like when we talk about like comics it's like you go that's a funny dude but like when when you when two when two people look at each other and go murders, murders. like you know, like it, it's like it's a different type of compliment because this is a guy that like again he would do i, I mean i saw that five minute set and the room shake thing he he had that you know, like yeah. He oh, he was, he was, he was, he was a murderer, man. He had a really good dad too. He had a really, really, really good dad. Like his dad was, his dad was a ride or die motherfucker for him. Like, mm. cause you know, he, I think, you know, he had some issues and his dad was fucking there for him. I'm, I remember thinking, I remember thinking you got one hell of a fuck. You got lucky as fuck with your dad. And I, I'm not, I didn't know his mom, I, but it's just yeah. his dad was always there to help him out and get him. Ah, oh, that fucking sucks. I'm sorry, well, man. I, you know I, what? No, no, no. I, but I think... comics, the thing is about comics, it's like, you know, this is something Michelle says all the time. Comics do more highway walks. Like, like we do more crossing highways and out at weird hours. Like, we don't think of it as risky, but like, if we saw the numbers on comics and that this profession, like, it's not a healthy profession. Like, no, no. It, it's and, not and, a, yeah. and being around alcohol, but like, also like, just the idea of like, you know, we put ourselves out like when someone's at home on a Tuesday night, they are safe. You know, <laughs> like when we yeah yeah, I don't you don't even Tuesday think about that. We put ourselves on highways all the time. My cousin Andrew time. just showed up. I love Andrew. How uh, tell him he's I doing good. I'm trying to I'm good. trying to convince him. Um, I'll tell you after. I'll tell you after. We should wrap this up. I I, I have I have do, meetings to do today, and 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 you've got Boca at, at your fingertips. <laughs> Dude, congratulations on the special. Dude, thank you for watching it and enjoying it. It really means the most. And for having me on, like you're I, always, I you're, you're always invited to my podcast. I you're super it. easy to talk to, and I love talking to you. And I and I and I'm telling you, I, I've told you this a million times. You remind me of my best friend from college, and oh, and that's... and I, you remind me so much of him that um and he's in he's in Tallahassee now, oddly enough. But uh, but so I love having you on the podcast, man. Anytime, Dude. anytime. It's so easy. It goes both ways. Like I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, man, it's just, it's just, it's really nice to have you as a friend. And I, I think we have to, you know, hearing about Eric, you got to tell that to people as much as possible. And it's like, um, I, I really do appreciate it. And, and watching the special that like blows my mind, like 
you're just a good friend. I appreciate it. Of course, it. brother. Well, hey, uh, stay on so I can gossip with you after. But thank you for doing <laughs> thank you for doing thank the you. podcast, Jared. Right. I appreciate it.